But the Alex Jonesification of the GOP is much bigger than the Bundy Ranch. Take Greg Brannon, Tea Party Republican candidate for Senate in North Carolina. He's running neck and neck with establishment favorite Tom Tillis All right, that's for the Republican enough. Senate nomination. Notice they're playing Halloween slasher music the whole time. Like, oh my gosh, it's so frightening because they're all about setting the parameters. And I'm going to go over this whole report right now and then tie it in to the documents that have recently come out uh, where Bill Clinton, as early as 1993, when he first got in office, they were putting out 300 plus page reports on how to shut down any free speech in America. And they actually say, we don't want voices out there we don't control. And this is published on Bill Clinton's own presidential library website. We're going to be going over that. It shows exactly who these people are. Now, who are these very people today, the current Clintons that run Obama as their front man and who control Media Matters that writes the talking points for CNN and MSNBC on record? Who is the White House addressing and attacking? They're attacking Alex Jones, Matt Drudge, and WorldNet Daily. Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com, WND.com. By the way, Joseph Farah is in studio next Monday. He's going to be in studio next Monday. We're going to be breaking all this down and more. Look forward to that. Oh, good. So he's, he's here in Texas shooting a film over the weekend. So he's going to be here Friday and Monday. Okay, good. Over the phone Friday uh, in studio Monday. Okay, fantastic. Now, long story short here, ladies and gentlemen, this is epic history happening right now. And when I get up in the morning and see that Paul Watson's written this article and I watch this news piece, I did not get happy for me personally. My flesh or my worldly side went, man, you better watch it. Because when you've got ruthless mafia criminals like the attorney general, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Obama, their front man, literally with you in their gun sights, it's not fun. So pray for us. There's no telling what they're going to pull. And they've pulled plenty. They've put FBI disinformation operatives on us. They've sent the white supremacists after us. They've Every time cops get killed, they plant evidence that the person's a follower of mine and we have to go prove it isn't. I mean, they really want to bring me down. And they want to bring down Matt Drudge, obviously, target number one, and they want to bring down um, people like WorldNet Daily. And I'm going to say this again. I've never really attacked Glenn Beck, except when he attacks me, or Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity or any of them. Because here's the deal. When the globalists take over, they will go after those people. Even if they've been part of a corrupt GOP establishment, they're going to extinct that just because the GOP stood for pro-life and stood for low taxes and stood for land rights and, and family rights. It will be eradicated. That's their goal number one. And then they'll split the Democratic Party in two different parties and continue the balkanization that way. They'll have a racial side of the Democratic Party and then kind of a uh, economic side. And they've already said that's their plan. They do the same social, engin same social engineering in Europe. And they do it by saying they're not radical while pushing the most radical anti-human ideas and then demonizing mainline human values. And it's called the Overton window. You guys put up on screen a definition of the Overton window. Thank you. And the Overton window is basically a sociology idea that I agree with. It's a way of looking at it as an allegory of imagine a political window that you're looking out of that, that you accept. Let me just read the definition. The Overton window is a political theory that describes a narrow window, the range of ideas the public will accept. On this theory, an idea's political viability depends mainly on whether it fails or falls within the narrow window rather than on politicians' individual preferences. It is named for its originator, Joseph P. Overton, 1960, a former vice president of the Center for Public Policy. At any given moment, the window includes a range of policies considered politically acceptable in the current climate of public opinion, which a politician can recommend without being considered too extreme to gain and keep the public's office. Now, what the White House does is they have all their operatives and czars and, and, and minions come out and say, we should kill babies up to age two. We should kill old people.
Yes, we're going to bankrupt health care and bring in death panels. Yes, we think men are inherently bad and all sex is rape. Uh, yes, world government's good. Yes, we want to reduce the population down to 100 million. Uh, yes, we're bringing in planetary government, putting fluoride in the water to brain damage you. Uh, yes, we're going to teach two plus two equals five. Uh, yes, we want forced inoculations. Those are the surrogates. They're there to move the Overton window over into eugenics, ultra Hitlerian land, and then call it liberal. Call the cyanide-laced Kool-Aid uh, mother's milk, okay? I mean, they're meant to go on TV, on MSNBC, in a promo that runs every hour and say, your kids belong to us. We need to destroy the idea that your kids belong to parents, they belong to the state. And they say openly, we're going to destroy the idea of the family. And then call that liberal. Total authoritarian sci-fi level evil. That's, they're not on the left. These people are in the pit of hell. I see things mainly as a circle with a black hole of tyranny at the middle that is a political gravity that sucks in all the other individually, truly diverse ideas that form a Renaissance society. A truly illuminated society. The Illuminati seeks to create darkness for everyone else, but they're illuminated with the knowledge, and you're basically blind. See, they're a counterfeit Illuminati. They're a counterfeit Christ. God eliminates. The devil creates a black sunshine that only his people can see in, but even they are blind to a certain level. They're only allowed to operate in an evil spectrum. I mean, you're getting the deep knowledge here. I hope you're listening right now. This is the philosophy that they understand. They've chosen evil because it will give them temporal power on this planet while they lose their soul. And by soul, if you don't believe in the soul, they lose their true free human intellect. They lose the incredible heights of free expression. But again, they label it as something good when it's something bad. So everything in these MSNBC and CNN pieces is accepted mainline politics. They say it over and over again. Normal politics. You know, should your child be taught death education at five or at 11? Well, all death education has been proven to increase suicide. Look at the numbers, all-time highs in youth. The drugging's caused that. Gee, is there a correlation? Of course there is. Is separating kids from their parents, giving them formula meant to shrink the size of their brain development and, and make them adult little cowardly creatures. You know, is that a good idea? Everything they do is to hurt you. Everything they do is to rob freedom from you and the Promethean fire. These people are an abomination. They are a desolation. There is no way to describe how evil they are. So everything they do is to keep the Overton window as far towards evil, as far down the black hole as they can, while demonizing any free thinker outside of that paradigm. And trying to flog you and beat you over the head if you associate with anyone else. I mean, when we have people from the left on here, they really get upset. When we have Muslims on, or we have feminists on, or we, or, or we reach across to people, when we get past the labels, they go into absolute chicken with a head cut off mode because they need to keep you on a very narrow reservation that's continually radicalized, racing away from common sense. And so they're afraid because they know what I'm doing. I'm not apologizing. I'm not playing the game of being reasonable. I go on these shows and I say, you are the enemy working for offshore banks to deindustrialize this country, disarm us and enslave us. You're the enemy. You're on notice. I see you. End of discussion. And because it's true, almost everyone recognizes the truth because you already subconsciously have a very powerful mind and your subconscious recognizes it. And in your gut, that's your subconscious, says this man speaks the truth. So, see, they can't allow a debate with someone that just cuts through it all. It doesn't play along with the larger game. So that's what they're up to here. And so everything they do is to teach you that you don't have any power and that you can only have power by being part of a collective that is their projection, their idea. And so they come out in a 15-minute report. The whole thing's up on Infowars.com. And they demonize anyone that dares stand up against tyranny and the idea of armed citizens. You got the feds with police dogs. You got the feds tasering people saying no free speech in an entire county area, but in two little pens. 
uh, you've got them spending $3 million on it. You've got uh, 200 vehicles, 400 agents we now learn. They're shooting the cattle illegally, breaking the water pipes. Federal judge says it's part of a criminal conspiracy to run everyone out of business. 52 families are gone. One family's left. The image of them like Tiananmen Square beating people up. Citizens respond. They come, most of them without guns, but some with guns, and say, if you're going to shoot us, go ahead and do it. We're going to then fight back against you. And the image of cowboys and men, women, and children walking across the line with a loudspeaker saying, we will shoot you, was like East Germans walking towards machine guns in the fall of Eastern Germany, of, of, of the Soviet nightmare uh, East Germany, and crossing over the Berlin Wall. It, it, it's that level of people engaged in real civil disobedience against dehumanization and wickedness. And they can't have that. So they've got to have Harry Reid... You know, they're, they're upset that the other senator is saying that this is patriotism. Because if that spreads, if that happens, and if the public ever realizes, wow, Drudge has like 10 million people visit his site a day. Alex Jones has over a million and a half to his sites and a million to his Facebook and Twitter and 3 million terrestrial listeners every day, 15 million a week.